We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us what benefits us, to benefit us from what he taught us and increase the knowledge. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma harim hadhi al-wujuh al-tahar an al-nar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make hellfire haram on all these beautiful faces. Insha'Allah, there's a beautiful, beautiful announcement, a beautiful guest coming in a few months. But before I get into the announcement, the surprise, insha'Allah, let's go back to the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A noble sahabi, Talha ibn Ubaidullah radiallahu ta'ala narrates his hadith. That at the time of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were two men who came and they took their shahada at the same time. And the first man, he went above and beyond. He strove and sought out the ajr for as long as he was a Muslim. Siyam, qiyam, you name it, he was the first to do it. And he strove and struggled so much that he went out in the path of Allah. Jihad fi sabilillah wa mata shahidan. And he passed away as a martyr. The second man did not strive and struggle as much, but alhamdulillah, he did what he needed to do as a Muslim. And a year later, after the first man, he passed away. Normal cause, normal death. Now Talha radiallahu an, he's narrating this hadith. One night, he has a dream. And in that dream, it's yawm al-qiyamah, the day of judgment. And he sees these two men who came and took the shahada together. And he witnesses the second man enter into Jannah before the first. The second man who did not die a shaheed or a martyr, who died a year later from natural causes, entered into Jannah before the shaheed. Now Talha radiallahu anhu, when he, when he woke up, he was confused, just like you and I are. So what did he do? He went to As-Sadiq al-Ameen sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And he narrated the dream to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he said, are you surprised? Did he not pray such and such amount of salah more? Yes. Did he not witness one more Ramadan. One more Ramadan made a normal, radiallahu ta'ala, and he was a Sahabi, but he did not struggle and strive as much as the first one. He died a natural death. He did not die shaheed, but he entered into Jannah before the shaheed. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. And as you know by now, the special guest is Ramadan, ikhwan, ikhwati fillah. And no, don't check your calendars. It's not Sha'ban. But it doesn't need to be Sha'ban so we can start preparing for Ramadan. It doesn't need to be a week before so we start preparing or the day before. As-Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. The best men to walk this earth after the, the prophets and messengers alayhim salatu wassalam. What would they do? Six months prior, they would start preparing for Ramadan. Six months prior, they would say what? Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, allow Ramadan to reach us. Oh Allah, allow us to reach Ramadan. And as our beloved Shaykh Hafizullah, he recited in, in the Salah, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ وَكَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That Allah prescribed fasting on us just as He did on the Ummah and the nations before us so that we can develop taqwa, piety, God consciousness, in everything we say, in everything we do, that we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything. That we come to Him, bi'idhnillah, with qalb salim, a pure, clean heart. Why did the Sahaba prepare six months from advance? Because they knew the value of Ramadan. They knew the weight of it. Not only was it the, the, the month where the Qur'an was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but this month has special rewards. So let's reflect as the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam in Sahih Bukhari, what did he say? Man saama Ramadan and iman and wahtisaba, ghufira lahu ma taqadim min dhamb. And in another hadith, man qama Ramadan and iman and wahtisaba, ghufira lahu ma taqadim min dhamb. That whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, whoever gets up every night in the month of Ramadan, imanan, with full faith and belief in Allah, doing it sincerely with akhlas, fi sabilillah, that you are fasting, you are praying taraweeh, you are praying qiyam layl for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Not because the family is doing so and it would be awkward if I didn't do it as well. Not because the whole community is doing so I must do it as well. Strictly to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wahtisaba. Seeking the ajr of Allah. Seeking the reward from Allah. Liwajhillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah is going to reward me when I do this. All his previous sins are forgiven. How many years have we been alive? 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70? And how many shortcomings and sins do we have? Every son of Adam is a sinner. But the best of sinners are the ones who repent often. If, the, if, if these two hadith are not enough, Nazid insha'Allah. Rasul alayhi salatu salam, what did he say? That whoever fasts sincerely for the sake of Allah, one day, not just in Ramadan, one day for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes his face a distance of 70 years from the hellfire. 70 years. Not just in Ramadan, outside of Ramadan as well. More? Rasulullah he said that when Ramadan comes, the gates of Jannah are wide open, the gates of Jahannam are closed, and all the shayateen are chained up. Is this not enough? Do you see why the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, six months prior would start preparing? So why is it that we start preparing the month before, the week before, the day before? Why? A few tips, inshallah, and reminders for myself first and foremost, because wallahi, I am no one in front of you. Just because I wear a nice wa'aba, it means nothing, wallahi al -azim. We all have shortcomings. We all need to, the reminder. وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Inshallah, some, some benefits, some things that we can take away, inshallah. Number one, have the right attitude from now. From right now. If I ask, can anyone, including myself, raise our hands and say, we will live to Ramadan. Does anyone dare raise their hand? La wallah. Why are we waiting? What are we doing? Why are we not preparing from now? Have that attitude that maybe I might not make it to Ramadan. So let me start fasting now. The siyam, the qiyam, the sadaqah, the tawbah. Why wait till Ramadan comes? Yalla, let's begin now. Let's start the fasting now. Let's start the qiyam now so that when Ramadan comes, the fasting is easy. The tarawih is easy. We're here from Isha all the way to Witr and we leave with the Imam. So that it is written that we were up at night praying the whole night. Even when we're sleeping for the next day to prepare for work, it's written that we are fasting, that, Afwan, that we are praying. And Tawbah, sincere repentance, we all have shortcomings in the last eight, nine months. We've all had shortcomings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with our family, with those around us. Let's repent now, today. And plan, ikhwani, ikhwati fillah. Plan from now. Plan from now what you want to do in that month, inshaAllah. Because wallahi, if you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So from now, plan, what do I want to do? What do I want to take away from this blessed month, inshallah? And I ask Allah to allow us all to witness it. And I ask Allah to allow us to witness it and be from the ones who are next are freed from the hellfire. What do I want to take away from Ramadan this year? How many Ramadans have passed and we are the same people? How many Ramadans? Let this upcoming Ramadan be the Ramadan that we change completely bin Allah ta'ala. That this Ramadan... What I leave with it is, insha'Allah, I completed the Qur'an one, two, five, ten times. That this Ramadan, I leave with it, that alhamdulillah, now I have a word of Qur'an every day I recite this portion of the Qur'an. Or I have a word of adhkar every day I have a certain portion of dhikr of Allah. Or I have a word of salawat ala nabi a, a, a portion every day that I send salawat ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Leave Ramadan better than you found. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to all reach Ramadan. And I end with this bi'idillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. How does this tie in to Bilad al-Sham, Gaza, Syria? Bilad, it's this Bilad al-Sham. And Yemen, and China, and India, and Afghanistan, and Sudan. 
they know their test. They, bi'idnillah ta'ala, are shuhada, are from the people of Jannah. What is our test? What is our excuse, our reason to go to Jannah? These people sacrifice their lives, their families, their houses, their wealth, everything. Fi sabilillah. What have you and I sacrificed? Let us strive from now and prepare for Ramadan so that bi'idnillah ta'ala, maybe, just maybe, out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through our little actions, He enters us into Jannah. And we can see these brothers and sisters that sacrificed everything. We can meet them bi'idnillah ta'ala in Jannah al with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If there's anything beneficial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any shortcomings and mistakes was from me and the shaitan. Subhanak Allah, bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما